this is Dean Jones calling for David Evans. David, um, I just wanted to uh, start answering some of the questions that uh, you had sent to me. Uh, the first one, how did you become involved with Disney Pictures? I made a picture called Under the Yum Yum Tree at Columbia. And uh, I was told that uh, Walt Disney had ordered a, uh, a print of that to, to run in his projection room. Uh, I think maybe that was it. Or uh, one day at lunch, uh, uh, Walt told me that, uh, that Ensign O'Toole on NBC, that I had some great endings on that show. And I said, gee, I, I thought to myself, I didn't say this, but I thought, what a funny, what a funny thing to say at great endings. But his show, The Wonderful World of Disney, followed Ensign O'Toole on Sunday nights on NBC. So I thought maybe he was warming up his television set uh, at the, on the ends of my show to watch his show, The Wonderful World of Disney. So uh, that might have been another way that uh, I got involved. At any rate, uh, he called one day and said he had a script called That Darn Cat. And uh, would I be interested in reading it. I told him I was, and I subsequently did the picture. And uh, that started off a, uh, a string of, uh, of films, uh, including The Love Bug, and this answers another one of your questions. Uh, I think it was uh, because of the success of the films that I was doing there that uh, uh, that uh, they, they had me do more and more. I, uh, <laughs> I think if I'd had a big flop, that uh, probably it would have uh, ended the string at Disney, but it didn't. Every every film was a success. So I think that's why um, uh, The Love Bug, when The Love Bug came along, they, they thought of me. Um, uh, they didn't write Jim Douglas with me. At, well, uh, they may have. They may have by that time, because I had done three pictures by the time we did The Love Bug, two or three pictures anyway. So they may have thought of uh, me as uh, Jim Douglas at that time. And, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, Bill Walsh, who wrote it, uh, there's the downbeat for the overture. So I'm going to have to go on here for the matinee in a moment. Um, your question number six about stunts, high speed driving, everything. And as, as I say, sometimes I was doing stunts and didn't know it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, once in uh, Monte Carlo, there was this large piazza in Paris, uh, and uh, we were coming uh, across the piazza. Uh, I, I believe it was as we were going to the to the race start. It was before the race had begun. But uh, I was on one side, and of course I had my uh, uh, intercom and everything, and they said go. So I I took off at, across this piazza. It was full of traffic. I, there were cars coming from every direction. I thought they were stunt drivers. Uh, so I, I just barreled right on up to, I mean, I barreled through, I'm whipping and shit. Because I thought all of these guys were pros, and we all knew what we were doing. Uh, I got to the other side, and, uh, and when I stopped, I said to the director, I said, hey, I said, some of those guys were really coming too close for comfort. I mean, they, they were inches away when we, uh, 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 at some points. And uh, I, I said, some of those stunt drivers are, were really coming uh, dangerously close. And the director said, uh, they weren't stunt drivers. Said, this is just regular Parisian traffic. <laughs> and uh, I was shocked because I had taken chances that I would never have taken had I known we were, we were dealing with uh, the uh, Parisian citizenry. So is that on film? I have, yeah. to, I have to look for that on my tape. Yeah, on the Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, when I crossed that big piazza. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, um, 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 uh, mishaps on the set of either film. Um, mishaps. Well, we had flown um, we had flown 12 racing cars to Paris for, Mo for Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo. And... Uh, they had been insured for a premium of $3,000. This sounds incredible. <laughs> but uh, there was insurance on these cars, and if I recall correctly, it was only a $3,000 premium for the first month or the first two weeks. I don't know what it was. At any rate, uh, the first day, uh, we, we destroyed a uh, uh, like a $25,000 Porsche, or maybe a hundred and twenty-five thousand-dollar Porsche. I can't remember, but it was an expensive car, 
and uh, so the uh, the insurance company was uh, was out a lot of money right right on our first day. Um, other mishaps. Um, Anything with you or Herbie or? Well, I remember during the love bug, uh, I I took a blown Porsche uh, uh, VW around the track at Riverside during lunch mm -hmm. and had it up to about 115, and it was uh, it was all over the road. Uh, I had Buddy Hackett as a passenger, and his his knuckles were white, and he was screaming at the top of his lungs uh, because the car. Though, though it was pretty fast, it was still, uh, and it had it had Coney shocks and, and, a, and a roll bar and everything built in, but uh, it still uh, it, it still had some of that uh, uh, very squirrely feeling of, of the old bugs, and mm -hmm. so it was not it was not really a a, a good thing to do. It was a, a foolish thing to do, really. But I just wanted to see how fast it would go, and we were on a racetrack. Um, I saw you on TV the other day. Oh, really? Uh huh. I drive the new one. What'd you think of the new Beetle? Yeah, I like it. I like, like it a lot. It's, it's uh, the the two liter engine is is real strong. Its its gearbox is good. They had uh, racing Goodyears on on the car, and it, it it really hung well in the in the uh, turns. Uh, was there one Kirby, Herbie co-star in particular you enjoyed working with the most? Yeah, well, it was the one that was just completely stock. Um, it. Uh, uh, well, actually, I meant the actor. Oh, oh, Herbie. Oh, oh. Well, uh, I see what you mean. Um, going through the list now. <laughs> I mean, I I enjoyed. I, I really enjoyed uh, both of those films, and even the uh, television series. Uh, uh, yeah, I, ha I have the TV series on very, very, very poor quality tape. Oh, do you? It's almost unwatchable. Number ten. Can you imagine the uh, love bug would become such a big hit? No, no, we had no idea, absolutely none. Um, um, of course, Walt had bought the book before he died. Uh, the the book's name was Boy Girl Car, and um, the way they normally, in those days, would pick a title at Disney, they would uh, get all the employees at the studio to suggest a title. And they'd write down, write down the top 12 uh, for the first preview. And they would let the preview audience uh, somewhere in L.A. or someplace uh, check the title they liked best. Mm -hmm. And 98% uh, of them uh, liked The Love Bug. So the, the book, the, the movie was no longer Boy, Girl, Car. It was uh, <laughs> The Love Bug from then on. And we had no idea it was going to bring in $58 million the first uh couple of months, which was an enormous amount, and it, it rated right under Gone with the Wind uh, in the top ten motion pictures of all time mm. for several years uh, before uh, the, the ticket prices went up and big blockbuster films uh, uh, like E.T. and others came in, and of course it knocked, knocked the love bug way down on the list, but uh, nobody had any idea. Uh, uh, and I think if Walt had lived to see the release of the picture, he would he would not have believed it either. Eleven. What do you consider to be the main reason why Harvey Herbie was and is so popular? Um, well, you know, I, I think uh, I think it's a part of of the benignness of of the little car. Uh, he's so he's so innocent. It's a, such an innocent looking little car. I mean, the VW. What was it? I mean, it was not a luxurious thing. It was not a <laughs> A hip thing. It was not a chic thing uh, to drive a, a a VW Bug. Uh, they they were cars that were just basic transportation, mm -hmm. and uh, um, you know the Corvettes and the Porsches and the Ferraris and practically any other car could blow them off. But here was this little bug with more heart than uh, uh, than the big cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the underdog, I believe. It was the underdog that uh, became triumphant. That was the the uh, basic appeal of Herbie. Twelve. Did Disney offer you starring roles in the other two Disney films, Rise Again and Bananas? No, they didn't offer me uh, those roles. And uh, I think it was because I said that I didn't think the scripts were up to uh, the quality of the first one. Right. Um, 
uh, were you concerned with being typecast as Herbie Zona? No. I mean, everybody gets typecast in my mm-hmm. business in one way or another. Are you often recognized when you go out in public? Sure, all the time. Uh, uh, has anyone ever called you Jim Douglas? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I was just that was just curious because I know a lot of times actors, you know, the TV shows or whatever they're in at the time during that period, people yeah. tend to recognize them like that. Yeah. Well, now I have had people say, "Oh, oh, uh, you're you're uh, you're Herbie's driver." Yeah, mm-hmm. I have had people say that. They didn't say Jim Douglas, mm-hmm. but uh, say, "Oh, uh, you're Herbie's driver." I say, "Yeah, yeah, that's right." <laughs> of course, I've made you know forty-five movies, right. and only two of them were with Herbie, but uh, they. A lot of people remember me uh, in other films. Uh, well, I think, um, I don't know, that's such an impact on such a generation, you know? Yeah. I mean, not just the VW people like myself, but just general people. Uh, share your insight with us, uh, what Herbie tricks, wheelies, etc., were real and what special effects. Well, there, the first one, there were no special effects. I mean, we didn't have the, the computer-generated stuff. Right. Uh, uh, if if it was done, it was done. Uh, for instance, three seconds of film uh, took uh, six weeks in the original one. Uh, maybe, well, I guess three or four seconds of film. Yeah, where Herbie skips across the lake. Uh, they they uh, built two towers, mm-hmm. and they put a steel cable between them, and they started sliding a full-size Volkswagen down those cables, and they had the towers so that they could pull them back and forth, tighten the cable, loosen the cable, tighten the cable, loosen the, t- the cable. Then they built a lake in in between the two towers of water, mm-hmm. and uh, so then they they uh, experimented with letting uh, letting the towers go toward one another, and the cable getting loose, and the car going down to the water, and then they tighten the the towers, and the cable would. They tighten, and and the car would come up. So that's the way they got the the look that it was skipping across the water. Was that a? That's, that's was, not a special effect. Was that, that a real uh, bug? That or, was a real bug. So it was wasn't like a fiberglass body or anything. No, it had it was a real body. They didn't have the uh, engine. I mean, they lightened it up mm-hmm. as much as they could. But it was a real body. Yeah, I've noticed looking at the film in that part, it looks kind of weird a little bit. I was just always curious about that. I'm glad you brought well, that my, up. Well, my remembrance is that it was a an actual, uh, uh, you know, they didn't have all of the guts in there because mm-hmm. it would have been too heavy, but it was a an actual uh, uh, body. Yeah, the first wheelie in the Love Bug was done with a cable and a crane. Really? Uh, the when he first does his wheelie, there was a steel cable attached to the front of the car and pulled it up. Uh, I mean, it was done just mechanically because there were no there were no special effects. In later ones, as I say, we we lightened the rear end, put more weight in the back, and we had uh, those big uh, a big engine in the back, and I could pop a pop a wheelie real easy. But that was not in the original Love Bug. Uh, when did her Disney give you the Herbie? Oh, about. Four or five years ago, they had one left from the original uh, film, and uh, that wasn't by any chance the car that was in uh, MGM Studios, was it? Here in Florida? Uh, is there one here? No, there was one in MGM when it opened, and then they removed it. That one. The I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if this car was that. I know this car for a time was the parade car at Disneyland in California. Hmm. Um. Uh, the one that I I gave to my I, I gave it to my friend who owns a Porsche Volkswagen a dealership. Uh, do you own any Herbie memorabilia? No, I've given them all away uh, for uh, auctions, uh, like the watches that I wore, uh, the stopwatch, you know, the wrist stopwatches and those kinds of things. Did uh, people ask for charities uh, and uh, to? Things off I don't know. I've given them all away. I don't have any more. I don't know if you remembered when I first met you, and I told you I was with. Uh, we do VW shows for All Children's Hospital. Yes. Which I don't know if you're aware of what All Children's Hospital is. Yes. Okay, but we do that. One of the ladies that does the show with me wanted me to ask you if you were free. <laughs> uh, November eighth. That's when the next show is. 
Well, uh, I don't. Uh, I, I know I won't be doing uh, Showboat, uh, but uh, I've got several things that I'm. You know, I'm producing a film in in uh, Hollywood right now. I'm not, uh, it's going to be a pretty busy schedule when I get back. Yeah, I told her I would ask for her. Okay. But that, we thought that would be a real nice treat. Uh, do you have any ideas for storylines? Uh, oh, sure. You know, every every week or two, I think of, of some storyline for Herbie. Uh, did it bother you that Disney changed the storyline of how Herbie came to be? Uh, the, the In the TV movie? Right, the one that just came out. Last yeah, moment. well, there were things about that script that I, I didn't care for. I, I had a very small uh, right. participation in it, uh, and I was glad to be in it, but... Uh, it, uh, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was one of the biggest reasons for watching it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, David. How long will you be starring in this production? Uh, till we go to St... Uh, we go to uh, Fort Lauderdale and then to Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., I will play the uh, the uh, two months in Kennedy Center. That will take us up to the end of uh, July, and then I'll leave the show. Um, what do you think of the new Beetle? Oh yeah, I, yeah. I like it. I, I told you. I, I, Did I, uh, I had a guy tell me already that there's someone who races um, cars, and he's planning on buying a new Beetle and putting Herbie numbers on it. <laughs> A next generation Herbie, right? Right. Well, David, do you have any other questions? Um, I don't know. There's probably be a bazillion questions, but I don't want to keep you. Um, Greg Carr, the guy who was with me the first night when there was two of us. Yes. He's a real big fan of yours, and he was. The only thing I do want to know is: is there a an address or an office like your agent that I could send the finished newsletter to, or if if we ever have any questions we could ask you, maybe we could send them there. Well, uh, I still get a packet. Uh, every week from Disney uh, to my office in California. So just send it to Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California, and uh, it'll get to me. Really? Oh, sure. So they're handling, handling fan mail and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. yeah Burbank. Sure. Yeah. They, they handle everything. Yeah. One of the other guys that's uh, trying to do this Herbie fan club with me is from Arizona. He actually went out to Disney's archives and research the car, and his car is really fabulous. I mean, his car is more correct than my car is. Mm. I mean, mm. he's he's fanatical. His favorite movie is uh, Monte Carlo film, so he's a, he's a big fan of yours, too. Well, you can always <laughs> write to me at Disney, uh, but uh, while I'm on the road, I mean, I just I, I just signed 1,500 pictures, wow. uh, 8x10s. I signed maybe yesterday a couple of hundred. Would you be interested in pictures of any of the Herbie cars from people in the club? Oh, sure. I don't know, you know. That'd be, that'd be very interesting. I'd love to see some of that. And But as I say, uh, the, my mail now is done long distance, and so I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not answering stuff. Do you have a computer at home? No, I don't. I don't use a computer, but my secretary and my wife does. Because we, uh, I have to send you the web page address. I don't think it's on that card. Yeah, I no, I, I don't. I'm not into computers, but. Uh, and I, I believe it or not, sometime, David, and I appreciate your interest. And, well, I, I appreciate you taking the time. It means a lot to me and everyone else. Well, God bless you, my friend, and uh, again, thanks for bringing your car down. I enjoy seeing it. Oh, you're very welcome. Okay. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.